do things that you can't teach, that means he also does things that you can't prepare for. Speaking of preparation, the way he prepared for his last opponent, Cedric Agnew, another undefeated fighter, he said he lifted weights, heavier weights than normal. He felt sluggish in the ring that night and felt his performance, though a seventh round knockout was nevertheless subpar. What did he do differently in preparation for tonight? Avoided the weights properly, and if he didn't avoid them, he definitely lifted light instead of heavily because heavy only makes you more massive and it makes you slower in the long run. Let's go up to ring announcer Joe Antonucci for introductions. Boxing fans, here we go. Main events in association with the Bella Entertainment present live from Revel Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Bout number two of our triple header on HBO's Boxing After Dark. This bout is sponsored by Hortiza Vodka and is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Aaron Davis, your commissioner. Tony Orlando is our chairman. Stephen Katz and Lynn Hettinger are bo board members. Our timekeeper at the bell, Ray Ryan. Boxing fans, here we go. 12 rounds of action for the WBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Our championship judges, Glenn Feldman, Julie Letterman, and John Pottere, and our referee, Sparkle Lee. Introducing first, the challenger. Fighting out of the blue corner, he comes to us all the way from Greenvale, Victoria, Australia. He weighed in at 174 pounds, blue trunks, red trim. An undefeated record of 19 victories, no defeats, one draw, six wins, coming by knockout. Please welcome Blake Il Capo Caparello. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Originally from Chelyabinsky, Russia, now living and fighting out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He also weighed in at 174 pounds. Black trunks, silver trim, professional record, also undefeated, 24 victories, no defeats. One draw, 22 of his 24 victories by knockout. Please welcome the reigning and defending WBO light heavyweight champion of the world, Sergey, the crusher, Our referee, Sparkle Lee, has our fighter's final instructions. All right, this is a WBO lightweight heavyweight championship bout. You already received your instructions. I want you to obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck, guys. For Sergey Kovalev, Roy, this is the last obstacle between big names, Bernard Hopkins, and the big money that goes along with them. For Blake Caparello, this is his chance to make a name for himself in the boxing world, because until tonight, he hasn't had one. My hat goes off to Blake Caparello for even accepting a fight to this magnitude. Kovalev comes out stalking. Caparello at least putting the right hand out there. The lead hand is jabbing hand. Creating a little distance, trying to get the range. The main thing we all want to see is how he reacts to Kovalev's power. 
that would tell us what type of night it's going to be for him. So, lightly attended affair, considering especially how vicious Kovalev has knocked out his last eight opponents, how viciously he's done it. Seems to have created some excitement among hardcore boxing fans, but not enough to bring them out tonight. Might be because no one expects Caparello to provide much competition. But there he is taking the initiative, leading with the left hand. That was a good right body shot by Kovalev in this round just a second ago. But Blake is coming out, you know, giving it an effort, a good effort. Caparello with that long right jab, but he brings it, Roy, back down below his hip against a puncher like Kovalev. He does, but until he warms up, Kovalev is not going to catch him with that early. Kovalev hasn't really thrown his shots with force yet, more like range finders probing Caparello's defense. Looking for reactions to feints. Low blow by Capilero. Oh! And Capilero dropped him. Yep, that's going to count. Yep, she's counting as a knockdown. Second knockdown of Sergei Kovalev's career already. Darnell Boone knocked him down. Darnell Boone locks a lot of guys down. Kovalev got up to win that fight and then smoked Boone in the rematch. Well, that should piss him off pretty good, knowing that Bernard Hopkins is sitting ringside. And that should be a big confidence builder for Blake. Kovalev seemed to go down because he was squared up to Caparello when the punch landed. He was. He went straight back on a mistake that uh, normally is not made, but tonight he may make a few mistakes because of the situation at hand. Kovalev properly warned there, Roy, for a rabbit punch. Hit him right in the back of the head. Saw the target and threw the punch anyway. Maybe a little sign of frustration. Well, frustration and the fact that you got Bernard Hopkins sitting here at ringside. This is the bad part about having this much pressure put on you. All those things are actually the things that happen when you see a person like Bernard Hopkins at ringside knowing that y'all have to fight next. I think Bernard Hopkins is seeing certain flaws exposed in Kovalev so far in this first round. He's trying. I don't know that he's seen it, but he's trying. Kovalev, the front foot gets stepped on by Blake's front foot, and he goes down. That could have caused him to lose balance. But at the same time, you can't take it away from Capilero because that was a clean punch right there, as you see. So the two things together caused a knockdown. And once again, I think all of that is just part of the fact that he has that added pressure on him right now. I got to say, I disagree with the call, having seen now the replay. Although the punch did land, I think that Caparello's lead foot on Kovalev's lead foot is the reason he went down. Could have very well have been the reason. Nevertheless, a 10-8 round for Caparello. For Caparello. And Kovalev did finish that round very strongly, though. Caparello, you see, circling the way a, an orthodox fighter would circle. That is to say, clockwise rather than counterclockwise, what you'd expect from a southpaw normally. But he normally circles that way, Caparello. Yeah, that's what he normally does. Um, he's a guy. Away. He's a guy like me. I like to do the opposite of what they tell you to do against the southpaw. So he likes to go to his left instead of going to the traditional right. But Kovalev is starting to warm up a little bit now. Starting to have a good time. Oh, great body shot. I mean, that is the kind of power Kovalev has always displayed. Caparello doing very well, it seemed in the first round and a half, and one shot to the body with the right hand by Kovalev, down he goes. And like I said, he's warming up now. He's starting to get in that groove. So you knew it was just a matter of time once you saw him warming up like that. Two minutes to go in the round, plenty of time. Caparello seems to have his wits about him, motioning Kovalev in. 
And Kovalev obliges. Not too smart to motion Kovalev in like that with your back against the ropes. Referee Sparkle Lee, I believe, correctly ruling that a knockdown. It looked like Caparello's knee hit the canvas, and in comes Kovalev. Looking for openings, not throwing everything with maximum force. Caparello down again and waved off. And a great wave off. Typical Sergei Kovalev. Roy faced with an undefeated challenger. Mows him right down. <laughs> Not that Caparello was considered a live underdog here tonight. But he is primarily a defensive fighter. He's a southpaw. He has a long reach, and guys like that can make it difficult and awkward for an offensive fighter. But Kovalev manages to just walk right through, it seems, any kind of style with which he's been presented so far in his professional career. He's all business, always right on point. You just couldn't ask for a more professional type of a guy than Kovalev. So I'm so glad for him and Kathy Duba to see him finally get this shot at somebody like a Bernard Hopkins. What must Bernard Hopkins be thinking right now? He's very happy to get the fight over with because he doesn't want to see any mistakes. Um, this is going to be a big payday for him. So. Here you see the straight right lead to the body. He looked up and came down with the straight right lead. Blake let him get too close to him, and that's why I see he was warming up because I realized he was getting in punching range, and Blake hadn't realized it. Great body shot right down the middle. You couldn't ask for a more perfectly placed punch. And it looks like he just touched him with it. Like right. the end of the punch just touched him, but it collapsed him. Yeah. Then you see Kovalev on the attack. Once again, he's too close. And Blake doesn't know that there's a straight right lead right down the middle. That shot hurt him bad, followed by a semi-left hook on the back of the head. The referee did a great job to step in and call that a knockdown. That was the second one. Yes. Kovalev winds up that right hand like a, uh, as a bolo punch before he throws it. We see that from slick boxers, rarely from punchers. This is the end of the fight, Roy. Yeah, that was that straight right hand again. And once he starts landing, that is pretty much a good night for whoever is in his way. Uh, you can't let a guy like Kovalev, who's known as a puncher, line you up with his crushing punches. Kovalev shows really utter contempt for opponents he feels have nothing for him. And since the... Darnell Boone fight, their first fight, no one has had anything for him. <laughs> Let's go up to Joe Antonucci for the official verdict. Boxing fans, the time. One minute and 47 seconds of round number two. Your referee, Sparkle Lee, calls a halt to the contest. Your winner by TKO and still WBO light heavyweight champion of the world, Sergey the Crusher. And we await final copy box numbers, which will show you a lopsided fight. Kovalev lands 26 to Caparello's 7, though Caparello threw 8 punches more than Kovalev, 58 to 50. Caprello landed a meager 12% of his shots, while Kovalev landed 52% of, of his shots, most of them power shots coming at the end in the second round. Let's look at those power numbers. Kovalev 25 to 7 landed. He threw 11 more, 39 to 28, and as you can see, percentage through the roof, 64% of his power shots compared to just 25% for Caparello.
Roy, what did we see here tonight? Well, we saw Kovalev come out and do the traditional Kovalev. We saw him come out, take a guy, feel him out, figure out his weaknesses, and then attack the weaknesses. Similar to what you will see Bernard Hopkins try to do to him. When it's a guy like Caparello, or in his last fight, Cedric Agnew, or in the fight before that, or in the fight before that, various contenders, he hasn't seemed to respect what's coming back. Does Bernard Hopkins have something in his arsenal, you think, that Kovalev must respect? Well, he got to respect the fact that Bernard is going to wait for you to make a mistake, like he did similar tonight yes, with the foot step is, uh, stepping on him. He looks for those type of little things. Those are the subtle things that he tries to attack. So he'll look for any little advantage to get in on you. And if he can find it, like if he thinks Kovalev's chin is suspect, he'll try to take full advantage of that. We welcome in now Sergey Kovalev. Sergey, congratulations. You went down second time in your career in round one. What happened? Thank you. Uh, uh, this, uh, I ju he, he just uh, cut me off my balance. And that's it, like. Replays revealed that he stepped on your front foot. Were you aware of that? I, di I didn't feel that he stepped, but uh, I, 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 I lose balance. And uh, this time got uh, his punch, and uh, easy punch. And uh, I fell out. It's uh, not knock him down. You went after him in the second round, as you do all of your opponents, without any fear of what was coming back at you. What were you thinking in that second round? Uh, I don't know, just a gut hit liver, punch his liver, and I felt that uh, he's done. And I, I did uh, over, you know, like, yeah, finish the job. This, uh, I like it. Sergey, we're used to seeing slicker boxers from time to time wind up with a punch, a bolo punch. But we're not used to seeing knockout punchers do this. Why do you do this? Why do you wind up with the punch? Maybe this is for, for beautiful boxing. Just uh, like uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, this is legend. I just, uh, some things to uh, try and repeat, you know, like, and be better uh, from, my, uh, from uh, fight to fight, you know. Like. Well, You've now preserved your early November date with the great Bernard Hopkins, who joins us here ringside. Absolutely. Bernard, oh. camera's this way. I'm surprised Bernard Hopkins doesn't know where the camera is. Usually that's a given. So busy looking at who I got to look at. The camera's going to be there. And when you look at him, for example, on a night like tonight, what do you see? I see a champion like myself, a champion that's going to unify the light heavyweight division. You see the same thing. Bernard, the boxing world tips its cap to you. You'll be two months shy of your 50th freaking birthday, and you're running towards the one guy in the division everyone else seems to be running away from. Why? I always ran to the fire, not away from the fire. That's my personality, and that's who I am, and that's what my career has been built on. I come from an era that's not the era today, but I just happen to be here, fortunately, through hard work, right? But now I get to show, at this stage, uh, something that you could never imagine, Max or anybody that's listening at home or here, that I can possibly pull off the undisputed twice in one career and be the champion in the with division that won four major titles, like when I done when I fought Oscar De La Hoya. It's so a I get to do it in 2014, November 8th. So pay attention and don't get sick that night. It's amazing that we're here even talking about this, given your age. You did it to Felix Trinidad, the destroyer who came straight forward. You did it to Kelly Pavlik, same thing. Even recently, not that long ago, Tavares Cloud, a big, strong guy, comes straight forward. But Bernard, eventually, people are thinking, the old man's got to, his, his time is up. This may be the biggest feat you've ever pulled off, if you can do it, what makes you think you can still do it? I'm an alien. I, well, if you pull it off, Bernard, I think we all agree. I think people already think that, but you want to say if? Okay, you be the first one to be like, okay, maybe you out of means of people, but I think I already convinced them that I'm not the norm. And so if I pull this off, like this is defining fight to pull off everything I've been doing, then that is reckless talking, Max. You should be educated in that. I don't know, as many great feats as you pulled off, this might be the biggest if you can do it. 
Max, you, you lost this interview. Sergey, everyone loses the interview with Bernard Hopkins. If he's alien, he needs to live a uh, different planet <laughs> on Mars. Yeah. I, I, I will. I will. What do you do to beat Bernard Hopkins, Sergey? Just the boxing. Just the boxing, and, and that's it. I, 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 I don't know. We have seen Bernard lose in recent years to a Chad Dawson, who's a, a big athletic fighter, a very close fight to Calzaghe, who's also an athletic fighter, but not a big puncher. What we've never seen is Bernard Hopkins knocked out unconscious that's the kind of stuff you do to opponents is that what you have in mind it would certainly catapult you to a to a new level in terms of stardom uh max you know like uh, i not gonna knock him out him you know like I, i'm going to the uh, to the ring for boxing and uh, if will happen uh, knock him out good like i, I will be happy but uh, it's not my goal and uh, if I will knock him out, him, but it, it will be, I will be new record, <laughs> new records man, like, uh, no, no, man, I'm going to go Hopkins. Uh, it's a, uh, I'm going to be uh, an, a new alien, an, a new uh, record holder. <laughs> Thank you, Sergey. Best of luck. That does it from Ovation Hall here at the Revel in Atlanta.